Hello students, Michael Sanchez here. Thank you so much for watching. Every Sunday at this time, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be teaching a new song. Uh, the day is called Song Sunday. So last week we learned uh, Believe by the Polar Express, so I'll give you guys some tips on how to do that. And today we're actually going to be learning uh, Deck the Halls. So just to give you guys a little bit of an insight on what I'm doing, I'm doing all these classes live on Google Hangout. Uh, all you have to do to be able to participate and ask questions live is be on Google+, and it's really easy to uh, join. It's kind of like Google's Facebook, and once you join, you can basically um, log in, uh, go right to my profile. If you search Vial and Tutor Pro on the Google+, Plus uh, platform, and you'll be able to uh, join in and ask questions. And also, you can uh, actually participate live in each session, so I've been having students participate throughout the week. Um, I have actually a different class going on each day. So tomorrow I'm doing a homeschool class. Tuesday is going to be our beginner class. Uh, Wednesday is for over 40 plus. Uh, Thursday is for advanced. Friday is fiddle. And Saturday is kind of just a hangout fun class. So to see all the schedule, uh, please visit my website at violentutorpro.com. Go right into the middle of the page. You'll see a link to the Google Plus portal. And uh, I'll explain everything on how to use it. Uh, it has a nice little video there and just everything you need to know. So uh, just to give you guys a little background as well, and those that have never seen um, me on video before, uh, my name is Michael Sanchez, and I'm a violin instructor. I teach in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, I love teaching. Currently have about 65, 70 students I teach weekly. Um, a lot of those are on Skype. So if you guys are ever interested in, in classes, let me know. Um, you can always contact me um, through my website or at Rivertown Violin. Um, uh, hotmail.com. So the song we're going to be learning today is Deck the Halls. So what you're going to need to be able to participate is this book. It's the Easy Christmas Instrumental Solos book. Uh, these are the titles that we're going to be kind of working through. So last week, like I said, we did Believe by the Polar Express. And uh, this week we're doing the Deck the Halls. And like I said, if you guys want to participate, you can log in to Google Plus and ask questions as we go. So you guys can actually kind of like participate and um, be, this can basically be like a private lesson for you. You can say, hey, I'm not sure on how to do this or why I'm getting this sound or this part is difficult. And I'll be, I'm right here to help. So this particular song, I would say you would need approximately not too much experience. I would say maybe one year experience, but certainly even if you have a little bit less, you'll be able to play it just fine. Um, it's in the key of C major. So to be able to play this, uh, the deck the halls, you definitely would want to know how to play the C major scale. So the C major scale starts off on third finger on the G string. So let's see if you guys can match that um, note. And then the next note's D. Second finger right next to our one. This is a C, an F natural, low two. G. A. B. And then C natural, low two. So that's a one active C major scale. So let's do that together real quick. Um, so grab your instruments and we'll go about this speed. I want you guys to try to get to the tip. Use the whole entire bow, and when you guys are going up, we'll really try to bend your wrist and try to keep your pinky nice and curved. Notice my thumb is curved also in the bow grip back here. All right, let's do the C major scale. basically the notes that we're going to be dealing with in this song. Uh, it's really important to make sure that your two and one are touching. So right next to that first finger. So I find a lot of students uh, are kind of in between. So this is a high two next to your three. This is a low two next to your one. Try not to be in this area. This is what I call the NARP zone because it's in between natural and sharp. Try to be either right here or right here depending on the song. In this case it's going to be low two. Low two on the D string and low two on the A string. 
So really try to do that. Very, very important. All right, so to start, what I'm going to do is actually play the um, Deck the Halls piece. I'm going to grab something real quick here. All right, here we go, Deck the Halls. <laughs> after that. So let's talk about some things. So as you guys can see at the beginning there, we see what we call the dotted quarter note. So some of you guys are very familiar with uh, what a dotted quarter note is. Some of you guys might not be as much. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So this is what we call a dotted quarter note. Dotted quarter note is one and a half beats. So a lot of you guys know that, but some of you guys don't. One and a half beats, okay? And also we see a lot in this piece, we see the eighth note, which is half a beat. So basically, if you add these together, they equal two. Now it's important that this note is played three times as long as this note. And a way to basically to... Um, to do this properly is to do what I call counting in eighth notes, which is basically where we double every rhythm to be able to count it better. So if we basically times both of these by two, you can see that now a, a dotted chord note is three and eighth note's one. This makes it a lot easier to count. So now instead of uh, the dotted chord note in eighth being two, it's going to equal Four. Okay? So when you're first doing the beginning of this piece, at the beginning of the measure, try to think of the rhythm like this. Two, three. One, two, three. One, one, two, one, two. So each quarter note is going to be two. Um, dotted quarter note three, eighth note one. One, two, three. One, one, two, one, two. Just like that. It's going to be a lot easier to count that way. And make sure that that two is right next to the uh, the first finger. So the first notes of the piece are three, two, one, zero, one in the rhythm. One, two, three, one, one, two, one, two. See if you guys can do that together. Now what it takes that's really important is to be able to get back to the frog quick uh, so that you can do those down bows with a whole bow. So I find students do this all the time. And then they're only here. Make sure that you're getting back to this point. A lot of that has to do with how you're flowing your wrists and index. So I want to see if you guys can go down bow and then come all the way back to the up bow quick like this. that again. Good. So definitely practice that. And when you're crossing strings, uh, the next measure we're crossing is the G string. Make sure that your G string elbow is about this high. G string elbow, D string elbow, A, E. Okay, watch how my elbow changes. And then back to here. To the G. Now, one thing, if you guys are having any problems with crossing strings, I highly recommend that you do the rocking bow drill pr uh, practice um, on each string crossing. 
So for those of you guys that don't know the Rocky Bow Drill, basically that's when we um, have our bow in one spot, we go up and down and try not to make any sound. This can be done in different parts of the bow. And this is practicing keeping your arm relaxed and your grip relaxed, uh, and it's a really good test of tension. Okay, so you guys might be getting sounds like this. That. When you guys are going up to the G. So if you guys are getting that, um, I want you guys to work on the rocking bow drill going to the, to the G string. So like this. And try not to make any sound. And then... Now we're at the tip. Now go up and down for the rocking bow drill of the D. Rocking bow drill. Okay. The other thing you guys could do to really work on keeping your arm relaxed uh, without having a lot of tension, which can basically we're trying to avoid the bounce and the squeaks, crossing strings. Try to put your arm up against um, a chair, arm armchair or up against your desk or any sort of object to where your elbow can't move. And try to play this beginning part. So we're really going to start to try to use more wrist, more index finger, the smaller muscles. So we don't want to do this. If we're doing that, it's going to be hard to get back and forth at, at a good speed. And it's going to sound awful when you cross strings. So I'm going to move this down a little bit so you guys can see me up against the arm here. So my elbow is up against this arm. I'm going to try to do this. Try to keep your pinky curved, your thumb curved, and try to just extend and then bend coming this way. Now notice how much my index finger is guiding the bow. Notice how much I'm extending. Very good. And uh, for those of you guys that are just joining us, uh, this is the book that we're working out of, Easy Christmas Instrumental Solos. You can get this on Amazon really easily. Um, trying to make it to where some of you guys that don't have the book, you're, you also can learn by just uh, seeing the fingers that I'm putting down. So definitely want everybody to be able to participate. So this is the part we're working on, trying to extend the arm, bend the wrist, use the index. That's the beginning of Deck the Halls. Now what I find with most students do is they like to cross strings and kind of move the bow together at the same time. So they like to go... They like to start that too quick. So just like the rocking bow drill, get to the position, then go with your arm, extend. So this is the difference. Move up, then go. Move down, then go. And then see how much my wrist is bending. For those of you guys that don't know um, drills for the, the wrist bends, try to um, balance some sort of object on your wrist, come up and down, work on this, keep your arm still. This is a really good drill that I highly recommend. All right, and then the next part. So we see a dotted quarter note there and an eighth note. So the notes there are A, D, E, low to F, open, one, and this is the dotted chord note. So remember, three beats if you're thinking eighth note. So one, 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 two, three, one, one, two, one, two, one, two, and the rest will be one, two. All right, let's do uh, all the way from measure three, which is where the piece starts, up until measure four, five, six. I want you guys to go about the speed and really try to do the same thing that I'm doing with the bow. So really come back to here, bend the wrist, everything that I'm doing. See how I 
I really pulled the bow back to get to this spot to do those uh, quarter notes. And then we have the same thing repeated. We're going to do the rocking bow. That's basically, basically the exact same thing. Now, if you guys are having any trouble with intonation, intonation is basically how much, how good you are you're doing at putting fingers in the right spots. I would suggest uh, getting a tuner. Um, tuner that you can actually get right on your iPhone. It's called the uh, INS Tuner Light. Uh, it works really well. It actually lights up different colors if your notes are in the right spots or not. So, like at the beginning, you're going to want to see G on the green, and then F, E, D, C, D. To see all that. All right, very good. Next page, next part here. Measure 11. All right, in measure 13, you guys uh, notice there's an accidental. An accidental is basically a note that is going against what the key signature says. So normally when you see an F natural in, a, in C major, you got a piece of paper here, this has something to do with yeah, reading music. So I'm going to write out some lines here for you guys. So here's my music staff. So this is an F. Okay, in the key of C, where I have a circle, we don't see any sharps or flats. Okay, which means that this is a low two, next to your first finger. Okay, but in this piece, we see what's called an accidental, which means that for just that note and for the entire measure, it's going to be high two. Now, once we see the same note in the next part of the measure it goes back to what the key signature says it was, low two. So this would be high two and then low two. Okay? So there's that spot in there where you have that accidental. So... There's your accidental, so that should be next to your three instead of your two or one. recommend uh, you guys do is not use your open A. I would recommend you guys use your four. Okay. Now to be able to reach your four well, it's really important to keep your angles of the fingers back. Try not to do this as far as trying to reach notes like that. Try to stay back because then you're going to be able to reach the four better. See the angle. Try to put it right on the tip. Don't worry so much about trying to get your um, knuckles up on with the four, because what, what happens a lot of times if you try to do that, watch what happens in my other fingers. They start to creep up. So keep your angles back and then just extend your four. So I would recommend fourth fingers there. Make sure that your fourth finger is in tune. You can always match it up to your open A. It's like that. Good. So that's kind of half of the piece. Uh, please, um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask at this time. I do notice that you guys are making some comments. Uh, I just see a lot of hellos and hi, everyone. But feel free to um, ask any specific questions related to the piece. So just to give you guys kind of an update um, and uh, recap on what we're doing, we're, we're working through the um, easy Chris, um, Christmas instrumental solos, and up until Christmas, we're going to be doing one of these pieces every day until Christmas time. So by the time we're done, you guys are going to be able to play all these fun pieces like Sleigh Ride and Silent Night, Little Drummer Boy, Jingle Bells, every Sunday at 7 o'clock. So it's uh, kind of a fun thing. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions on um, things that you would like me to 
teach or advise on, feel free to email me, rivertownviolin at hotmail.com, or always live chat me as well on either one of my websites, violintutorpro.com or superiorviolins.com. So very good. So that's kind of the first half of um, Deck the Halls. So let's go through a little bit of the second half. Some fun pieces in here, I tell you. Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> cool. All right, here we go. And this is going to be very similar to the beginning, but um, play along with me and just really try to follow the same bow pattern as I'm doing. Try to get back to here, bending the wrist, really extending out, not using too much arm. So a lot of similar stuff as a beginning. And what's cool about this book is that you can actually play along with a pianist. So you can get a friend together that plays piano and uh, sounds really cool. Also, it does come with a CD, so you can play along with a CD if you don't have a pianist. That's kind of cool. Eric has a question. So Eric says, can you tell us about the other video you made uh, for Deck the Halls, a little more complicated with dynamics and staccatos? Sure, yeah. Basically, um, like you know, the thing that you have to be able to do, Eric, is obviously the notes first. Once you get the notes down, uh, that's when you can start doing, you know, the rhythms properly, and then the articulation. Uh, there's not a lot of staccatos in this piece. It's kind of a simple version of it. But you know, if you wanted to make it a little more advanced, maybe like maybe do the first note staccato. That's how I would kind of do it. Uh, and then dynamics, you have some uh, dynamics in here that start off forte, loud at the beginning, and then get kind of uh, a little bit softer at measure 11, and then kind of goes up and down from mezzo forte to forte throughout the piece. So basically to be able to play louder and softer, it's all about um, index pressure. So look how I'm um, using the whole bow, I'm going to get the same sound. <laughs> If I start to apply more pressure with the index finger, I'm getting more of a forte. Even though I'm using the same amount of bow, it's all about the index finger and getting different dynamics. So here's like more forte. Here's more mezzo forte, less index pressure. Here's mezzo piano, even less. Piano. It's all about what you're doing up in the index finger. And uh, for those of you guys that don't know, the index drill, very good drill. Set your bow in the strings, press down in one spot, make sure that the bow doesn't rock. Bring the stick down to the hair, and do that in different parts of the bow. Hardest to do at the tip. And one thing I've been implementing in the students' repertoire too is not just doing the index drill, but also trying to do the rocking bow drill. So say one, two, three, one, two, three, rocking bow drill in the middle of the bow, one, two, three, rocking bow drill, and then at the tip, same thing. It's the hardest place to do it. So basically, that's going to help you guys to start getting the feel for that index so that you guys can improve your dynamics. And also just getting um, from point A to point B faster, getting back there, uh, having a relaxed arm, wrist, 
but the index is what's being used there to bring the bow back and forth. So very good. Um, I see some other comments and questions here. Uh, James uh, LeBlanc, why is fourth finger A better than open A? Uh, very, very good question. Um, I think you mean why should you do fourth finger over an open string, I'm guessing. Um, so, I mean, this is the same pitch as that. One reason why you want to do it is because eventually you can vibrato a four and not open, you can't vibrato open. So in this piece earlier, it sounds much better to do, well, it sounds better. avoids a, cro a string crossing. So what we do in, in playing violin, we always want to avoid string crossings and also um, the more we can use uh, place fingers down, the better because then we can do more vibrato. So that's a great question. Uh, it depends on the spot though in music. If you're kind of going into the next string, then it's okay to do open if it's a fast note. But if it's a slow note, you typically want it to be a four. Um, if you have a teacher that you go to, they'll always give you kind of suggested fingerings. I can certainly do that, um, but yeah, you just kind of feel out the more you play where the four should be and where the open should be. But typically, a longer note is where you're going to do um, fours, uh, and if you're staying on the same string, you want it, you want it to be fours. So, great question. So, uh, able to uh, probably answer one more question here. If you guys have anything there? Uh, notice we have quite a few viewers on tonight. Um, so yeah, just to let you guys know, next week we're going to be learning another song. I believe we're going to be doing uh, Feliz Navidad. That's kind of a fun song. And uh, as far as for this week, um, tomorrow I'm going to be doing some techniques, some beginner techniques at 9 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard. Um, and then on Tuesday, 8 o'clock, uh, um, sorry, uh, Tuesday is the 9 o'clock Eastern Standard. I'm going to be doing some beginner techniques. Wednesday at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard, I'm going to be doing another class for uh, 40 plus. So if you guys are 40 and up, come join us. Uh, to hear some great encouragement uh, about playing the violin. Last week's class was really, really great. Uh, this Thursday at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard, I'm going to be teaching a advanced class on shifting. So you guys are going to learn some more about how to shift uh, better in music. Friday we're going to be doing another fiddle class uh, at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard. Um, we're going to be teaching basically uh, some improvisational tips, um, how to play uh, so you guys can eventually play in different bands uh, and jam sessions. And then uh, Spotlight Saturdays kind of just uh, feel out whoever wants to participate can come in and just hang out and jam and talk and just have a good time. So very, thank you very much. I got one more question here I'm going to take from, uh, from J.P. Hoffman. It's the first time we've heard from him. I was just getting ready to ask for more info on the index finger. I will be going back to review those drills. Any other advice for developing the flexible wrist and fingers? Yeah, um, JP, there's a ton of stuff on that. Um, highly recommend, if you haven't yet, check out my website, violintutorpro.com. I have a great uh, selection of videos there uh, that teach all the fundamentals, all the drills, techniques. Um, so you guys can get a really, really good insight on that. Um, I go from step one all the way to step you know, 10 on just everything you need to know regarding the uh, wrist index, Crossing Strings, um, the, my Violin Tutor Pro Series 1 DVD uh, covers all of that. I also have a lot of great resources on YouTube. You guys can check that out. I have almost 3 million views on YouTube. It's uh, youtube.com slash Violin Tutor Pro. You guys can check that out. And uh, i got a lot of good stuff on there, like vibrato video, shifting. And obviously, these videos are getting posted straight to YouTube. So if you guys um, aren't able to catch the classes, you can also go on there. But yeah, basically, anything that you need help with, let me know specifically. Um, I teach on Skype and I uh, love helping other people out just on different technique tips and advice to help them play better because everything that I'm talking about with the arm, the wrist, the index, everything has everything to do with tone and sounding good on the violin. So um, thank you guys so much for participating and everybody um, asking questions and joining. I uh, really hope it catches on to where people understand how to use the platform. I think it's a lot of fun. You can get students involved, and um, I can help you know people out live. And I think it's so great that uh, the audience can also ask questions. That's really really cool. So 
help to keep growing this, but I really need your help and advice on just uh, different things that can make it better. So, and also, by the way, if you guys haven't been to my Facebook page lately, Violin Tutor Pro on Facebook, um, we're doing a great contest, giving away a free electric violin. So please uh, go on there, and all you have to do is share the photo we have, and you can uh, be eligible to win prize there. So I'm going to be giving that away right before Black Friday. We're going to be giving away some, uh, or doing some great specials also for Black Friday coming up um, on SuperiorViolence.com. Thank you guys so much for joining, and uh, I want to thank Eric, John, JP, James, and everybody else that asked questions tonight. I really appreciate your participation, and it's exciting to know that you guys have uh, your profile set up and ready to go on Google Hangout. And uh, if you guys need any help at all specifically this week, just let me know. Um, RivertownViolin at Hotmail.com. And tomorrow is our homeschool class, so I look forward to that at 12 o'clock. And then please join me to, uh, Tuesday for the beginner technique class. We'll be learning a lot of new things um, on there and hopefully having some students uh, participate. Thank you guys so much for watching, and hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.